we're diving into a topic on the record that is timely, but also crucial for the future of communities, and that's clean energy jobs. The U.S. Department of Energy just released their 2024 U.S. Energy and Employment Report, and the numbers are impressive, 142,000 new clean energy jobs added in just one year. But behind the big headlines, uh, what does this mean for Black and Brown communities as we see shifts in the energy sector? What opportunities does it also bring? And how can we ensure that Black and Brown communities are not left behind? Well, I'm happy that I have someone to break it on down with me today. Uh, Bethany Jones, she is the Director of Clean Energy Jobs uh, at the Department of Energy. And she's here to talk about how these record investments with the Biden administration are creating opportunities and what it means for us. Bethany, welcome. Thank you. Great to be here. Absolutely. Let's start with the big picture. 142,000 new clean energy jobs last year. How does this translate into real opportunities for Black communities across the country? Yeah, so what we're seeing is that clean energy investments are really driving job growth in the energy sector, way above average growth of clean energy jobs. Uh, they grew at more than double the rate of otherwise robust job growth in the economy. So we're seeing lots of opportunities in the energy sector. And that's good because energy jobs tend to pay more, to be more stable uh, than some other jobs in the economy. They're also more heavily unionized, and we're seeing growth of unions in the energy sector with clean energy unionization rates exceeding the energy sector average. The reason that that's good is because unions are good, especially for women and workers of color. They levelize and equalize pay rates uh, across occupations and shrink that gap that we see with women and people of color in the workplace. So seeing more unionization is really promising. We also know that from the survey that unionized employers are more than 50% uh, more likely to have DEI plans and formal programs. And so that trend is, is encouraging. Um, the other interesting thing that we found is that as jobs are getting better, employers are having an easier time hiring and finding qualified workers. And so this improvement in job quality and this uh, increase in clean energy is actually also helping the businesses and the employers. Um, when we look historically, black and brown communities have often been sidelined in industry yeah. industry. So when we talk about specific steps, the DOE is taking to make sure that uh, black communities are front and center um, at the clean energy sector as it continues to grow? What steps is DOE taking? Yeah, I just, I wanna say that the data is so important. What the UCR report tells us is that uh, black workers and African-American workers are pretty severely underrepresented in the energy sector. 9% of energy sector employees are black and African-American workers compared to 13% of the employment average. So that baseline, that benchmark is really important so that we can measure against that every year. There's other, other underrepresented groups as well. Women are uh, extremely underrepresented in energy. Latino and Hispanic workers are underrepresented in energy. This last year, a third, nearly a third of the clean energy jobs uh, were held by, of the new net new energy jobs, were held by Latino and Hispanic workers compared to just 19% uh, of their representation in the workforce. So we're seeing an improvement there, but not seeing improvements with women employment and employment for African-American workers. This is important for us to measure because it's a essential goal of ours to make sure that the energy sector is inclusive of all of the American talent, including people who face historic barriers to career track training and employment opportunities. That means workers with, with criminal records and how do we work with employers to reduce background checks and how do we uh, work with apprenticeship programs to make sure that there's pathways for workers who've been left out of this industry and left out of this economy. For DOE, all of our competitive funding applications or competitive funding opportunities 
require that firms submit a plan. And part of that plan is how they're going to address those systemic barriers to employment. How are we going to make sure that the energy sector represents the American workforce and all of the diverse diversity in it in terms of talent, but also socioeconomic, racial, ethnic, gender diversity. And so we're really pushing on employers in the sector to think proactively and upfront about how they're gonna do those things. And they're actually scored, their proposals for funding are scored based on the strength of those commitments. What's been the reception since then? Or can you share with us some of some of the feedback that you have received? And on top of that, I want to ask about like when we look at Texas, California, New York, um, some of the states with the highest number of clean energy jobs. Um, we how how are states with significant black populations like Georgia and North Carolina faring in this clean energy boom? The, there have been there was an increase last year in clean energy jobs in every single state and the District of Columbia. So. The benefits of these historic investments are literally seeping into every nook and cranny of the country. And we see that with the announcement of 800 new factories announced to onshore the supply chain, re revitalize manufacturing uh, to support this energy transition. Georgia uh, has been, is home to many, many, many of these new clean energy factories. Um, Alabama saw really high job growth in the automotive sector. Um, you know, I'd have to look at my notes. It's hard to remember the data on 50 states, but we do know that uh, that this is not just uh, this is not just a ripple effect. This investing investing in America agenda and the investment that it's driving is benefiting communities all over the country. As we um, come to a close, I want to, for, for someone who's watching this and they're hearing this and they're like, okay, what are some of the best sectors within uh, the industry that are good for black and brown communities that are really good and create some of the best opportunities to get into? And then what is the, what is the outreach that you're doing um, to let people know there's so many great things that come out of this administration, but sometimes there can be a disconnect between what is coming out and what people are actually feeling, seeing, and and knowing about. Yeah, yeah, so those are great questions. I mean, um, first of all, so much of the jobs that we're seeing immediately are in, there's a lot of job growth in the utilities sector uh -huh. uh, and a lot of job growth in the construction sector. And that makes sense because while the manufacturing jobs are coming, first you need to build those facilities. And so in the short term, a lot of the opportunity is in construction. There's a lot of uh, job growth for you know, electricians and people with electrical skills, because if you think about it, you need them for EV charging infrastructure and grid modernization and, um, and energy efficiency and renewable energy like solar development. So there's a lot of job growth. Um, but uh, in terms of what we're doing, what, what's really important is that these historic federal investments through the bipartisan infrastructure law and the Inflation Reduction Act, that they benefit not just the companies receiving the federal money, but the communities in yeah. which these investments are being made. And that's part of why we ask upfront for strong community benefits commitments from entities, companies seeking federal funds. And then we hold them to those commitments. Another thing that we're doing that I'm excited about is an initiative called RAMP. It's a community workforce readiness accelerator to help connect local workers where these investments are happening to the job opportunities on those projects to help create that connective tissue so that employers have an easier time hiring local and disadvantaged workers and underrepresented workers, and that local communities have a way to access those opportunities. So we're rolling that out in 10 communities, and I'm really excited to see the results. Um, Bentony, before you go, where can people go to find out more information, to see if they're one of the communities so uh, that they can get all the, all the things that are being provided by uh, this information? There are so many different sites, but one uh, good repository of information is through the DOE Office of Infrastructure. We just published a new map that shows all of the 
all of the investments that have these community benefits plans and summaries of what those plans are. That's a really good place to start. And on that web page, you'll also find a link to the Office of Community Engagement, which is the front door for DOE to direct questions to anybody at DOE who, who, uh, who can answer them. Thank you so much, Bethany Jones, uh, Director of Clean Energy Jobs at the Department of Energy. Thank you. We welcome you back on American Urban Radio Network to give us any new information coming out of the department. Great. Thank you so much. Take care. Absolutely. Thank you.